Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and users of Simulation X, today I would like to introduce you very briefly into the new features of our current release, Simulation X 2024, which came to the market just a few weeks ago. So I would like to start with news, which are, of course, the most uh, important for you from the uh, modeling and libraries perspective. The first example which I pick here is our new collection of heat exchangers, which we introduced to this new version. And this new collection of heat exchangers is a completely reworked implementation with the aim of increasing the performance, the robustness and numerical stability, but also increasing the usability and the ease of use. These new heat exchangers, they come in two levels. One will be a more concept level like approach where we use very simple parameterization. We don't need any very specific knowledge about geometry in order to run it. It's based on the so-called NTU method. And the other approach is more geometrically oriented. This is what we see here in this example on the background running, where a uh, liquid to air heat exchanger example, for instance, for a cooling system in an office installation or in a, in a machinery hall, is modeled and we see here that we dynamically and fast can simulate this type of heat exchanges. It's based on the collection of cool prop fluids, which we recently introduced for thermal fluid applications. The cool prop we now also extended into the capability to use them in the pneumatics and the hydraulics domain so that we can also use this way of modeling for pure gases and uh, pure liquids also. The uh, second news uh, on the library side which I would like to introduce is related to electrical application. It is about uh, the brushless DC motors which we have added to our library collection. So these motors are very common in a lot of applications starting from automotive, electric vehicles, but also they are applied in different types of machinery, medical equipment, but also consumer applications. So these motors are mainly characterized in their behavior and in their also NVH or vibration generation by the shape of the back EMF function. So back EMF function is a design criterion for such motors. And uh, this function here can be actually adjusted and tuned in order to see how a motor is performing in his intended working environment. In addition to that, we of course need uh, controls and power electronic components in order to drive such motors and these are also part of the libraries. They are adjusted to the uh, use case of a brushless DC motor and come here as part of the new package so that you can look into how the motor is performing and how smooth the torque act output actually will be as a result of the shape of the back EMF, but also of the operation of the control circuitry. Apart from the libraries, we also work quite a bit on the usability of Simulation X. And here I would like to show you a few examples based on an application use case coming from vehicle dynamics. So what we see here is a combination of a vehicle and a trailer, and we run it through a standard experiment, which is a circular drive if, uh, with increasing speed. And if you look at that, simulation here, that the animation is a little bit accelerated, then we will see at a certain point in time, we will not be able anymore to actually maintain uh, the ground contact of the wheels uh, for the uh, vehicle trailer combination. And so we will see that wheels are lifting and at a certain point, we actually completely lose the stability of the vehicle. And of course, in order to understand what's happening in such condition, uh, we need to look into when and under what circumstances such kind of condition appears. One way to do that, the classical way to do that, of course, is to look into the result charts. But we have introduced new ways of looking at simulation data during the simulation or in the post-processing and animation of the simulation, which we call views, and those views are more numerically oriented. There are two of them. Uh, one is actually just a variables view where we can, during a simulation, pick any variable and display it numerically. This is especially helpful if you look into variables which are vectors or matrices, which are very difficult to display in result charts. And the other new kind of view which we introduced is what we call a watch window. And in this watch window, I can create a list of variables or a list of expressions which I want to monitor during my simulation. And as an example here, I have picked 
the real ground forces of all the wheels here in this uh, vehicle and trailer combination. You see them here. And actually, naturally, as soon as I will see a zero here in these conditions, I know that one wheel has lifted up the ground. And I also created uh, two logical watch functions, which observe all the four ground forces of the vehicle as well as the trailer. And it returns in a true or false as soon as I start loose ground. And so I can now here watch during my simulation when this kind of event is happening, but I can also actually go and zoom through my simulation and move along the trajectory which the vehicle is performing in order to find the point where actually some of the wheels is losing ground. So it's happening here for the trailer at about 24 seconds simulation time. Yes, in addition to these uh, new views uh, in the simulation X, we also created uh, new possibilities to work with the result windows. Of course, you know already know that there is a measurement function, so I can place uh, cursors inside my result window, I can move them around, and if I place a second cursor somewhere, then I open here a measurement uh, rectangle and get my measurement values. This is pretty much the same as we know it from the previous releases, but now it looks a bit more pretty. It has a label which shows uh, the position of the uh, crosshairs here in my window. And I can also use this label and uh, make it a fixed label on my curve. So in this case, it will become permanent, it can be remembered, and uh, I can recall it after saving and loading my model, and also if I rerun a simulation. So created label, they will reappear on the curve at the same time instant, so that I can use them for tracking previous results, but also for monitoring how a result is changing between two simulations. So another feature I would like to show here quickly is the better handling of uh, curve data inside models. The curve data blocks, they are already nice to use uh, for ages in Simulation X, but now we can also work better with curves which contain a larger amount of data. So what we see here inside this curve, we have close to 10,000 data points. And uh, this, of course, might become an issue in the simulation because it might generate events, uh, it might introduce fidelity, which slows down our simulation speed. And very often, I'm not really needing this kind of high resolution. It's just coming in because I use sampled measured data, for instance. So now I'm actually able to examine the curve in this respect by using a zoom function, which has been newly introduced. So I can go at any level, understand what's inside my data, making decisions whether I want to reduce the data or not. And if I decide that I would like to reduce the data set here, then I now have a built-in simplification method, which either works as a simple downsampling with regular intervals, or I can also choose a more small algorithm which actually monitors the fidelity of the curve. So it will look on how much changes on the curve are happening. And if there's low changes, it takes a small amount of samples. If there are uh, big changes in high fidelity, it will take a higher amount of samples. And I simply control this by a slider control here, which introduces some amount of tolerances. And then you will see how much original data points I have and how much remaining data points I get. And I can decide, OK, this might be the level I want to be. I confirm, and then I have a reduced data set here on my curve. OK, so this is a quick overview on what uh, has changed on the visible front end. We also work quite a bit under the hood in Simulation X by improving a number of things. The most important thing I would like to introduce here is the feature of parallelization. We started to work into uh, making the execution of a simulation, uh, the execution of the Modelica model uh, parallel so that it can be distributed onto several processor cores, which naturally will lead into an increased performance for the simulation. It's not an easy task, so it's not finished for us yet. What you will see and can explore in Simulation X 2024 is a beta implementation of this feature, but in the near future, uh, we will finalize this and will also expand it to all the solvers we have gradually, step by step. And so you can benefit from this increased performance in simulation speed. The other changes which are worth to mention are a kind of comfort function. Uh, so you already know that we are using tokens in Simulation X for two years now. 
And this token licensing uh, was already very convenient and introduced flexibility because I can decide which kind of modules I want to use uh, at which time and can change between different runs of my simulation in the modules. But if you wanted to change, so far you had to close and restart simulation X. This is something which we have uh, changed. So now you can actually return tokens which you don't use anymore uh, into the token pool and make them available for your colleagues uh, across the company. And so features which use a large amount of tokens, but which you only use for a certain time, like the code export, there you would be able to acquire the tokens before you start your work. And then without closing simulation X, you can return the tokens to the pool. Last but not least, I would also like to mention that we re-established the borrowing of licenses. So what is borrowing of licenses? It means that you can actually check out licenses uh, from your license server and you can take them offline without being connected for, to the server for a certain amount of time. So if you go to visit one of your customers or if you work at home without being VPN connected to your company. So it also increases the flexibility of usage in Simulation X quite a bit. This shall be enough for my quick presentation today, giving you an overview of what's new in Simulation X. I would like to point your attention that we will give a more detailed introduction to all the new features in a webinar. The webinar is planned to happen on 4th of September this year, and we will start at 2.30 Central European time. And it will, of course, be distributed online, so you'll be able to watch it from any place around the world. We will record it, make it available. Thank you very much for listening today and hope to see you on the webinar.